So joining us now, Michigan Senator Gary Peters, chair of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee for the second cycle in a row, because you were so successful last time with a narrow victory. Absolutely. What's one seat among friends? That's right. And that one seat does make a really big difference, as you know. Uh, one seat, in the, when you consider confirmations, right. it's all about, you know, confirmations and judicial, well, the Supreme Court. So let's talk about Montana. John Tester, this is really tight. He's a very strong candidate mm -hmm. and very popular. Absolutely. But he's got a very strong Republican opponent who's well-funded. Well, he's in a really tough state. So Montana is a state that's going to vote for Donald Trump probably in excess of 20 points. Uh, that's uh, that's tough. But the good thing about John Tester, he's proven he can win, as he's done in the past. He's won there in very tough conditions. Uh, he's going to win again. Uh, he represents uh, Montana. He's as authentic as you possibly can get uh, in terms of, of a candidate. And the guy he's running against kind of moved in. He's an outsider. He's uh, not connected with Montana. He wants to open open up uh, public lands uh, for private investors. I mean, those are things that are not popular. I'm confident he'll win. And you are spending a lot of money trying to open up some other states. So you've got Florida and Texas, not considered great targets for Democrats, but you've got some good candidates. What are your chances? And are you going to spend real money? Yeah, uh, they have, we have a real good shot. And, and it's back to candidate quality again, like we have the contrast in Montana. We have that also in Florida and Texas. Ted Cruz is less popular in Texas than he was the last election, and he didn't win by much. We have a very strong candidate in Colin Allred, a member of Congress from the Dallas area. Florida, we've got a Rick... star. <laughs> football star, too. Don't underestimate a football star, a pro football player in Texas. Uh, then we have uh, Debbie Mukarsal Powell, a, a very a strong candidate, a former congresswoman from the Miami area against Rick Scott. And we have an abortion referendum on the ballot in Texas. And we know how powerful that is turning out voters who want to protect their right to reproductive uh, freedom. But we need resources. Uh, we're putting in resources that we just announced 25 million in ground campaign uh, across uh, our targeted races in Florida and Texas. We're among those, but uh, we still need help. That's why our, our defendthesenate.org uh, uh, site is so important to have the resources because we've got big money coming in against these races. But we know if we have the resources and we run the kind of ground campaign like we did last cycle when we made history, we can do it again. But at the same time, you know, you, they, they're both in Texas and Florida. They've got Donald Trump by big leads over Kamala Harris. But if you look at the polling right now, we're basically in the margin of error. So we're in the margin of error with candidates. Uh, uh, and we always knew that that would be a close race. But being after Labor Day and being in the margin of error with strong Democratic candidates in both Florida and Texas, if they get the money in Florida and Texas, they can win. We, we know that's uh, possible, but we've got to continue to push very hard. How is Kamala Harris replacing Joe Biden changed the equation? Well, one thing is uh, energy, energy uh, on the ground. Uh, there's no question the Democrats are, are more motivated. We're seeing that across the country. In my state of Michigan, we're seeing the number of people who are signing up to get out, knock on doors and make those ground contacts uh, has gone up dramatically. Uh, and that makes a difference in close races. It's, it's how we won last cycle, too. I, th these are run, won on the ground when you're in the margin in a close race. Every vote counts to be able to identify who your voters are and to make sure they actually get to the polls or send in an absentee ballot is a difference maker. It was last cycle. It's going to be a difference maker again this cycle. Uh, as long as we have the resources and the volunteer help, and we're getting the volunteer help with Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket. Well, on that score, I want to ask you about Michigan because it's so close. It's so critical mm -hmm. to both can campaigns. And... You've got people resisting Kamala Harris, in, according to the polling, on the economy when all the data are in her favor on the economy. But Donald Trump is still credited with, by you know, many voters with being you know, better equipped to handle the economy. Well, and she's very well equipped, as you talk about the, the past and what but, she's talking about But that's about not now. translating to the voters. Why, what does she have to do? Well, I think she continues to, to lean in on the issues that she's talking about, uh, to help everyday families, to help afford uh, to buy a house. Uh, we have uh, many families that are struggling to do that, to uh, have an actual concrete plan. Kamala Harris has a concrete plan. When it comes to helping small businesses, something that I'm really excited about is she's leaning into small businesses and starting a business. Americans want to live their version of the American dream, and often that means starting your own business and hiring other folks. We've got Kamala Harris talking about real substantive issues, 
And Donald Trump is uh, is uh, unhinged and not talking about things that people really care about, like Kamala is. But they are focusing on immigration, which is a big, uh, a big issue for them. You know, finally, Maryland, where you've got Larry Hogan, a really popular Republican governor who had a lot of Democratic support. Mitch McConnell said that was his best pick. Well, we have Angela Osselbrooks, who's a very uh, strong candidate. Uh, she's uh, just not as well known uh, as the former governor. But uh, when people get to know her, uh, they vote for her. We're seeing those numbers uh, improve. So it's just a matter of running a campaign and making sure people understand that she's a, a top quality candidate. And in Maryland, uh, they also understand you can't have a Republican majority in the in the U.S. Senate. When we elect Kamala Harris as our next president, she needs to have a Democratic Senate to just to get her appointments confirmed, uh, but also judicial appointments. And when folks in Maryland uh, hear that, they understand it and they vote for Angela. So your priorities in terms of money, you've got to have enough money so that she gets better known. Right. Same deal in Florida. And Texas. And Texas. Right. Right. Those are, but obviously we have to hold all of our incumbents uh, as well. Uh, and my number one job as a DSCC chair is to bring all the incumbents back. And they remind me of that every week that I'm here. Ohio, uh, Ohio, Ohio. Absolutely. So Sherrod Brown, we've got to make sure Sherrod uh, comes back. Uh, that's going to be a close race. Uh, we've got uh, outside special interests pouring money into Ohio right now. So Sherrod uh, needs uh, resources as well and the help from the DSCC. And we're going to provide that to him. But he, he's as authentic as you can get Get it as well, and he's proven that he can win in Ohio time and time again, even as Ohio has shifted redder over the years. And Donald Trump has to win Pennsylvania. If he wins Pennsylvania and keeps North Carolina, you know, and wins Georgia, then he doesn't need Michigan, Wisconsin, and the rest. So, Pennsylvania, you've got a very popular senator, Bob Casey. Mm -hmm. Could that be a sleeper problem for you? if Donald Trump does well in Pennsylvania? Well, we're a, it, it won't be a sleeper problem because we're focused on it. Uh, we're focused completely on making sure Bob Casey uh, has uh, the resources. We're working closely with the uh, Harris campaign because she needs uh, to win there as well. Uh, there's no question that that's a, a, a key state for, for both of us. Uh, and that's another state where we have a, a billionaire that has now come in and is pouring $30 million uh, against uh, Bob Casey. So uh, we are continuing to scramble to raise resources. That's why the DS is important and defendthesenate.org uh, for when people go there, they help the DS do what we have to do, but also giving directly to the candidates in all of these states is particularly important. And uh, I would ask folks to, to really look at both uh, Florida and Texas. Well, Senator Peters, you were you were credited with working miracles last cycle, so they rewarded you with the same <laughs> tough job this cycle, even tougher. Yeah, we're going to we're going to do it again. It's basically the same playbook. We've got candidate quality issues. Our candidates are superior. And I say the Republican candidates, if I put them on a continuum, it's either flawed to very flawed. Uh, and most of them are towards the very flawed versus strong Democrats, both incumbents uh, and candidates. And we run really good ground campaigns. And that's how we won last time. We're going to do it again. OK, Senator Peters, thanks for the update.